Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G297 and welcome to the episode. In this episode is actually going to be a special request. Um, I know from my last video I was given the recommendation of trying out the F40 Ferrari again at Doug Expressway. So in this video I'm going to show you guys how to get the car, explain how that works. Also for this video I got the car swapped so I'll also make sure and share how you can get this car swapped. Um, even if you're not level 50 yet, um, I'll show you where to buy it if you're level 50. If not, let's say if you're below level 50, like 40 or 45, I'll show you how to get a free swap if you do have the engine for it. Explain how, how that magic works. I'll, of course, be showing the livery I'll be using for this race. Also, the race strategy, hot lap, uh, everything you need to know in this race and video will be here. Uh, so without no further ado, let us get straight to the video. Now, how to get the car? It's pretty basic. And unfortunately, this car it can be found at the Haggerty Collection, the Legend Legends cars. And I really recommend you guys go ahead and get that GT1 and the McLaren MP4 unless it's already sold out. Now, unfortunately, the F40, as you can see here on screen, it is sold out. Um, I made this recording yesterday. So that's why the date is a little bit off than today's date. Um, hopefully, you guys were able to enjoy the solar eclipse. Um, all that I'll add that too. Uh, but here's the car itself. Um, it did cost about 3.1 million credits. Now, but by the time it does come back around for its rotation, I'm not too sure if the price is going to be below 3 million credits or not. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see if it does. That's what that blue arrow indicates uh, that the price has gone down. Uh, but you can already see the car itself, even if you just buy it stocked, it's ready to go for Tokyo Expressway. So it's nothing really too um, aggressive with it. It's almost a perfect 600 car. So like I said, just buy it. Uh, you might just add one upgrade, but it's probably a very minor upgrade at that. Um, so that's basically it for the car. Very decent stats. Uh, with close to 500 horsepower and about 425 pounds of torque. Weighing way, way below 2500 pounds. And here's the car itself. And just for some reason, I don't know if it's just me or not. Um, but I seem to be liking the F40 just a little bit more than the F50. I don't know if it's because of the way it's shaped. Oh, the car's body overall. It's just something about this car is I like something I like a little bit more than the F50. I just can't really quite put my finger on it or explain it. Uh, might might be the shape of it, possibly uh, a little bit more flat and aggressive. That big aggressive wing, possibly that's what it is. Um, but a very iconic car, of course, from the whole entire different centuries. This car has been in several titles. Um, I can remember playing Forza Horizon on the Xbox back in 2012, and it was a mission in that particular Forza Horizon game that you actually had to race against, I think it was a train, and if you beat the train, you then would get the car. So, very, very enjoyable car to drive, to own, um, so I really recommend buying it. Um, just make sure you save up plenty of credits um, if you want to buy this car. Uh, just over 3 million credits, that's all I need, and that's going to be it uh, for the car. So if you didn't get it, sorry, um, hopefully it'll show up soon, but if you do have it, uh, let's then continue to our next part. So for the livery, for this car is actually something special. I'll give a quick special story about this livery. Um, I'll go ahead and share it right now in my gallery. This is actually a livery that I personally have made. Um, so basically... If you just look at my profile and showcase check my styles here it is right here so i just recommend just type my gamer tag jeffrey g297 now this special light blue guff livery that i made is we had a special series called the reign of powertrain and in this particular series we had a series between m mid engine cars against rear engine cars and this was kind of the livery i made for that particular uh for i think it was a four week for for race week uh, event and th that car was really strong in this category um, so very special livery really like how it looks very simple nothing really too crazy about it um, so now if you don't want the livery but instead you want the parts if you want to know what the parts are 
Uh, that's fine, I'll go ahead and show it right now. Starting off with the rims, it's actually going to be raised center lock. Keep everything as it is. After that, you'll then need to do is make sure the front bumper is fully customized to Type A, the rear Type A, the rear standard, and the wing Type A, and for road, there's no road cage, and that's it. Um, so here is the overall setup that I'll be using for Tokyo Expressway. As you can see, here is our lovely uh, engine swap right here, the F140 uh, B Enzo. Um, now I will, I will quickly show you how to get this engine for free if you do have the engine itself before we start the race. Uh, support hard as our tire compound, fully customized differential, make sure you have the torque acceleration to 5 and the brake into 20. Uh, suspension, you can keep it as normal so you, you can bypass it. For our aerodynamics, make sure the front is 100 for the front. Uh, for the rear, make sure it's set to 300. After that, make sure you set your ECU to 95, like you see right here. After that, make sure you have your power restrictor set to 80, like you see right here as well. And as we move all the way to the far right, uh, that's going to be it uh, for the setup, besides the brake controller. Um, I recommend having it set to 2 or 3 to the rear, and that is going to be it uh, for the setup. Now, if you're wondering and curious how to get a free engine swap for this car so when you go to the tuning parts here is all the engines that are in this that I have currently on the game now this is an old video plus I'm using a different car so um, if you do have the right engine for the Ferrari F40 if you have the Enzo engine uh, one thing to look out for is make sure it's compatible now here's an example I did using the Mazda RX-8 with the Mazda 787B engine swap so if you do have the Ferrari Enzo engine you should be able to click enter and you should see something similar to this it'll give you the price of the engine itself plus the stats where it's uh, basically uh, showing the, the new horsepower the weight you know all that stuff uh, for the car showing you what the car will be like after you do the swap uh, now the price of the engine swap if you're curious to know just in case you want to buy it rather than if you don't have the engine swap on hand and you have to be level 50 collector level 50 in order to buy it uh, just want to throw that out there it's going to cost you I think it's over a million credits I'm not too sure exactly how much it exactly cost uh, but it's not cheap it's going to cost you a pretty penny for that swap so hopefully uh, you guys will get as much info about that as possibly can other way let's now move to the race as you can see we have ourselves race fuel map number three this is going to be a no pit stop run uh, with this particular build so of course the main strategy here is of course not pitting uh, in this race and we'll have to kind of a little be patient on our fuel saving as well just a little bit uh, but you should be fine on fuel map three um, it's just making sure you don't really over rev the engine and another a uh, special thing to share as well is whenever you do want to change gears for the F40 with the new engine swap, uh, you actually will have to rely more on your ears uh, than the RPM tracker because once the tracker bar does begin to fill up, uh, the car actually does begin to really delay just a little bit on speed itself. Uh, plus, I could tell the car actually reacting about the same time. So, if you're familiar to the Aston Martin DB100 VGT, car uh, it's gonna be the same thing around there uh, plus it's also a good thing too if you just shift up a bit earlier uh, then the tracker is going by because you'll be saving the bit fuel too as you can see we're actually right now in the green or right close to it of us being able to save, save enough fuel um, without pitting uh, you know for fuel or tires tires you really shouldn't worry about the main focus here is just mainly running a very consistent pace and just making it all the way through without uh, having to make a pit stop. But you can see, uh, even running on map 3, uh, we're actually still P2 uh, in the beginning of the first lap. So this is really overall a good run, uh, considering that we're not even going full power uh, with this car. I mean, this car is fast on its own. Um, when, it, when you drive this in fuel map 1, the car is really, really quick. Um, in the cornering, the speed, main straights, very quick car. Even uh, with this 
map 3 you begin to see that our car actually is just as fast if not faster than the Honda on the straights which is pretty crazy so at the end of the first lap with us racing this new uh, fuel saving mode run still not too bad for the first lap about 2 minutes and 21 seconds which is very quick uh, needless to say so here we are going to show it in a nice replay cinematic view so this so is between us and the, the GTR. You see the GTR is behind us, and then there's a nice cap between it and then uh, fourth place. But we're going to really try to do our best to really catch up with the Honda, which I believe we can. I mean, uh, the car does feel very nice in the corners. Um, even saving fuel, we're not losing too much time in the corners. It's just really trying to re react faster and better in those corners. Uh, than Honda and you can see we actually are getting some time on the Honda in some of these other corners um, as well and we'll begin to really gain a lot of time through here because the AI take a more awkward racing line through uh, the first underpass which I don't know why um, and basically just you know hitting the marks and just breaking at the right time and you can see we're just about maybe about less than a second behind the car now about three car lengths at the most two right now so we're really catching it pretty quickly and we're going to make a move right on the inside right here we got the right uh, at the right spot at the right time make a very nice move overtake for the lead and usually this is when, when we begin to really uh, you know hit our marks and try to enlarge the gap even more uh, you can just tell that our race lines are a little bit different than Honda but despite that um, really smooth handling car to drive and we're actually getting away from the Honda which is a good thing and you can see we're going to really kiss the white line just a little bit right there and you can see uh, taking that last right hander pretty nicely uh, I think better than the Honda as well uh, gained the power early as well and that's going to be it uh, for lap 2 so very strong quick car um, overall so we're going to fast forward and that will be on lap 4 now I'm going to show you guys an onboard cam shot. This is going to be our hot lap guide around the track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you guys watch this clip. And just pay attention to see what I do inside the car. And I'll see you guys when we get to the finish line. So we did a 208.962, which I actually think was pretty quick. Um, so just to give you guys a quick overview of what to basically do 
uh, whenever you want to try to stretch out your fuel in this race, also give my overall review with this car. Um, so like I mentioned before, you want to use your ears, to rely on your ears when you hear the engine actually w making a winding sound up. That's when you want to change the gears. Um, you don't have to really go by the RPM tracker. If you do, you, you'll then begin to burn more RPMs than necessary, uh, which will then lead for more fuel to be burned, which you really don't want that to happen. Um, but yeah, this car is really smooth to drive as we're going to quickly put the alpha male up down very quickly. Um, like I mentioned before, the straight line speed is really good, right at the mid 190s. Um, first turn, third gear, and you can see the car actually does feel nicely smooth in that first turn. No signs of understeer or oversteer from the car as well. It's very straight, um, even though we did get a bit loose right at the end of that corner right there. Um, but yeah, it's very enjoyable to drive. Um, so if you are able to do this method, now if you do have to make it to pit road and you weren't able to save fuel, don't worry about it. Um, I just tried a different method in this particular race. I knew there was a way you could actually save your fuel and just extend stretch your fuel out um, in this race. So it's actually pretty nice to see that it actually is possible to actually uh, run this race on this fuel mixture 3 and then just mainly run a very decently good pace and just mainly switching the gears earlier and if you have to go off the throttle earlier too just let the car run naturally that's also another big help as well letting gravity be your friend as well um, so as we come to the little bit last straight to that right hander you can also see we also switch gears pretty quickly too um, as we we're about to finish up this lap just trying to minimize the RPMs is what we're trying to do so as we get down with this right hand to turn for the last time of this race you see we got just enough fuel um, to get this done you'll also see us early switch uh, the very last part of the lap as well so we actually did the job very well done um, now if you don't feel comfortable with fuel map 3 then you can try fuel map 4 that could also work too um, I, you can also try 6 too but I think 6 might be too slow but anyway other than that, we are able to get this race done right 26 minutes and 5 seconds, which is pretty quick. Also, a new personal best with this car, uh, since we didn't have to go into pit road, which was nice. Um, so there's the full set itself, 26.05 uh, total time. That's without pitting, so you save up tons of time if you don't pit um, at Duck Expressway. 208.962 was our fast lap on lap 4, which you guys saw on the onboard camera with the cockpit cam. Um, and that's about it. So I really enjoyed this build. Uh, we kept the car clean, not to mention didn't hit anybody, and we kept the clearance bonus, which is all great. So hopefully this particular build will help you out. Hopefully you do have the car and the engine swap for you to try this out. Um, the car just felt really good the whole entire race. It felt very comfortable, very smooth the whole race too. So hopefully this build will help you out. Um, hopefully you got the car and the engine swap um, that you guys can use as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you leave a like. That'd be highly appreciated. And I spent over like 4 million credits just to get the body right for this car. If you guys are curious and check out my last episode, I did using the combo video of both the Mazda 7 8 b Swap RX-8 and the Sauber C9 Mercedes at Sardini. You can click on the field right there. Hopefully that'll help out too if your money grinds over there. And if you guys in fact enjoyed the episode today, why not go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night wherever you might be. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.